Okay, this is going to be a teardown video of a LED light bulb. How exciting. Um, actually, there's a lot of uh, really incredible engineering that goes on to these things. Uh, now, this particular Cree unit uh, is interesting because it's been priced at a, uh, a real breakthrough price. Okay, obviously two bulbs here, one that's uh, still intact and then one that's been disassembled into its uh, major components. Uh, lots of real cool things going on here. Lots of clever engineering has gone on uh, in this bulb to uh, to meet the requirements. Um, the first thing, of course, is uh, just a glass uh, dome that uh, covers the LEDs. It has a diffuser on it, and that's kind of important. Uh, these uh, LEDs, of course, are very, very bright. Um, this is what appears to be a circuit board. Well, it is a circuit board, but uh, rather than having a backing that's uh, consisting of fiberglass and epoxy, um, it's actually uh, aluminum. So, uh, aluminum-based uh, circuit board. Lots of cool things there. Uh, a little um, uh, modular adapter, essentially, to uh, connect the leads here to the board. Now, you'll see a little bit of solder here. That's actually some um, uh, work I'd done just to instrument the boards, see how they were working. Uh, they're actually not in the production product. Uh, this is a, a piece of metal, of course. Uh, it's a, um, a heat sink. It draws the heat down uh, from the LEDs uh, through the uh, metal back, I guess, and then uh, out to the fins. Uh, the, the power conversion board, uh, of course, uh, the problem with wall sockets is they're all AC, 120 volts in the country I live in. Uh, of course, LEDs are things that want uh, small numbers of volts, uh, so you always have to build a converter. And that's a huge challenge. That's one of the big failure points in any lamp. Um, the uh, conversion of energy, they get hot, and components which get hot get unhappy, and they have a short short of service life. Uh, and then just the basic uh, A base, nothing too exciting going on there. Okay, uh, LED circuit board, obviously. Uh, 20 LEDs, they're arranged uh, probably in series. Uh, when you measure the voltage across here, I got a couple hundred volts, so that implies they're all wired as a long uh, series line. And actually, if you look very closely to each of these LED components, there appears to actually be four different dyes in them. That makes about sense. Uh, LEDs want a couple volts of forward voltage to glow. So we have uh, 20 placements, four LEDs in each, that's 80 LEDs. Uh, 200, maybe about 200 volts there, so that sounds about right in terms of uh, making this a, a ray glow. Now, uh, it looks like a circuit board. Yeah, well, it is a circuit board, actually. Um, and what happens is they eventually uh, roll it up into a little tube. Uh, but when it's manufactured, it comes like a, a sheet. Um, now, number one problem with uh, LEDs is they create heat as they create light. And you need to get that heat away from the LED for the LED to have a decent life. Whole bunch of ways of doing that. You can uh, mount the LED onto a ceramic uh, substrate and uh, carry the heat that way. There is a switch bulb approach where they use a flexible circuit board and they fill the bulb with a, uh, a liquid conductive media. Um, what's going on in Korea is interesting. It's, uh, it's, it's an aluminum circuit board. Now, when you think of a circuit board, you always think of uh, fiberglass and epoxy backing. Uh, nobody says you can't use things like uh, aluminum. Aluminum is obviously electrically conductive, and that's not its value here. Uh, aluminum is also thermally conductive, not a bad thermal conductor, and it's all an inexpensive metal. Um, now, the other interesting thing is you can see there's some grooves here that have been sort of put in. I think they're probably put in post-process, they're, they're mounted with large sheets, and they have a groove here. Uh, I'm not entirely sure how they've uh, fabricated the groove, but I'm sure it's an inexpensive process. What the groove allows is this thing to be rolled up into a tube, and then used as a uh, an emitter where it emits uh, evenly around uh, the radius of the bulb. Lots of cool things going on here uh, from a manufacturing perspective. These are test points, of course. Uh, in manufacturing, these will be built up in uh, sheets of uh, dozens or hundreds. And what will happen is an automated testing machine will come down. Uh, it'll apply a, a probe here. Undoubtedly, it'll apply some uh, power. Uh, or they even apply the power here and then put some measurement probes here. Uh, what will go on is basically they're trying to make sure that when they've done the uh, surface mounting of the LEDs, their LEDs are all working correctly. Uh, really interesting here, uh, there's actually a two-dimensional barcode. Um, I will uh, here just zoom in for a second. So what that LED barcode is, it's uh, been obviously uh, put in by a laser. Uh, so it's obviously done at manufacturing time. Uh, that's a really interesting thing. You can obviously encode a fair bit of information in that little barcode. And uh, the barcode is going to provide the manufacturer the ability to trace the lot numbers, uh, potential serial numbers, data of manufacturer potentially. Uh, whatever else is really important to a manufacturer to understand uh, the quality of a product. Um, now, let's look at the actual circuit board in terms of its layers. Obviously, the black there is a silk screen. Going one layer below that, something that's white, obviously, uh, that's solder resist. Uh, now, you, when you think of a circuit board, you kind of think of them being green. Uh, solder resist, of course, exists in a whole variety of colors, including, obviously, white. 
uh, white clearly for an optical reasons. Um, below that will be the actual non-conducting layer. I'm sure it's a very thin layer of fiberglass or, or polyamid film. Uh, all this does look like uh, fiberglass. Uh, polyam is a little more expensive. And then bonded to that through an adhesive, of course, is, is the metal plate. Okay, main uh, controller board, uh, AC in, DC out. Our biggest problem with LEDs is they only need a couple of uh, volts to glow, but of course electric systems around the world uh, provide AC, which was very suitable for an incandescent light bulb, but uh, not so good for a DC light bulb. So you got to build a circuit board, and that's not unusual. Lots of cool things going on here, though. Uh, first things first, uh, some large capacitors, obviously, through hole. And I'm sure the vendor would have liked to do everything with the surface mount technology, because that would have been a... Uh, way of automating uh, the assembly, but obviously you can see the values that are needed in the circuit are so large they had to go to the through hole component. Um, the vendor is actually a well, well known vendor, Nichicon. Uh, they've been around for a long time, a uh, well respected company. Um, and that's actually interesting as well, uh, often in very low end consumer equipment and when you're really trying to squeeze the cost down as much as you can, uh, you start to see uh, vendors of a sort of unknown lineage showing up on assemblies. Now, that's not happening here, uh, a prime spec vendor. The other really interesting thing is, of course, the uh, through holes here, and that you might think would be a hand assembly step. Uh, but this bulb actually says it's made in America, um, which is very cool. Uh, and that implies, of course, labor is not so cheap. Um, and I'm not entirely sure these are hand uh, assembled. They look like they've been done with uh, something called a selective wave. Um, the selective wave is another way of uh, soldering components onto a, an assembly, which is actually um, more uh, mechanized. Uh, you don't need a lot of labor for it. So kind of cool. Um, let's flip the board over and uh, look at where all the semiconductors are and uh, we'll just trace out the circuit. It's obviously a very, uh, very straightforward assembly. Uh, down here uh, coming in for the AC is a, a fuse uh, for safety reasons. Good to see. Uh, these two uh, black cylinders are inductors. I'm pretty sure that would probably be the common mode choke. Uh, one thing about these bulbs of course is they produce a lot of electromagnetic uh, energy uh, when they operate and uh, the government gets very concerned about uh, putting noise down the line, then the, the line starts to radiate. So uh, you have to put common mode chokes in for regulatory reasons, they're not doing anything functional. Um, here, of course, the, the main controller, it's a, it's a little power factor corrections chip. It's actually kind of interesting. Uh, not all that modern, I think the data sheet was uh, either 2005 or 2008, so it's been around for a fair number of years. Uh, again, from a, a well-respected vendor, ST. Uh, a MOSFET here, uh, which is part of uh, what's needed for this thing to operate. The blue box being the inductor. Uh, and down here, uh, a full wave rectifier. So basically AC in, converted to a full wave, a very high uh, DC voltage. Uh, essentially a regular like type component, uh, regular type circuitry going on here. Um, obviously these, uh, these parts here are more capacitors uh, in the through hole. Now, if you poke your uh, eyes up here, you can actually see another uh, two-dimensional barcode. Um, and again, this is really interesting. Uh, circuit boards obviously are fabricated up, uh, many panels up, and then uh, a robot will come along and actually uh, carve out the board. Um, now it looks like this up here was actually done It's like through a drill. Uh, again, something done uh, at the processing time, so basically they're encoding some information. So. I guess it's really speaking towards uh, there could be some pretty strong uh, manufacturing engineering going on at this company uh, where traceability is hugely important, of course, uh, if you want to stay in a process and they're encoding some information on this board which will allow them to, to track things, I presume. So, uh, very cool. Uh, other things you would note, uh, now you probably need a microscope here and you won't see that very well in a YouTube video, but uh, you look at the solder joint quality, uh, all really good uh, solder joint quality. So. You often don't see that actually when you start to try to save money and they have the skimp there. Uh, this little thing here is called the fiducial uh, that allows uh, the robotic pick and place machine to locate where the circuit board is uh, and then accurately place the components. Uh, okay, what's going on here? Uh, you can see there's a wire sticking out of the bulb. Um, it's a thermocouple, uh, a K-type thermocouple. It's used to measure temperature. Um, all the electronics, the power system uh, for the bulb is sitting in this uh, bottom portion just like any LED bulb. Um, Strangely enough, this is actually plastic, not metal, so obviously a, a less a conductive uh, material. The uh, fluted area here is the only metal, it seems, on this bulb. So uh, what I will do, uh, because heat is really a big deal in electronics design, uh, it basically uh, determines your uh, uh, lifespan of your product. Uh, I've got, a, of course, a, a meter here which has a temperature setting, and I've got the uh, thermocouples. What I'll do uh, is put the bulb into various fixtures to measure the temperature. 
Okay, so uh, here we have it in a, uh, a desktop lamp uh, that I used uh, in a previous video. You can see that it's uh, the electronics are uh, 97 degrees centigrade. Okay, the famous enclosed light fixture. Uh, there's nothing in the box, nothing on the website saying this thing can't be used uh, in this application. This is the one that uh, causes lots of troubles for LED bulbs uh, because basically the heat has to get out of the uh, globe there. That's pretty challenging. So uh, I've had this bulb running now about uh, 20 minutes, and uh, I've got the uh, thermocouple on, of course, and uh, it's been uh, running uh, for a while at uh, 85 degrees centigrade. So the cool thing about them using PrimeSpec vendors is you can actually find uh, really high-quality data sheets and app notes on the web. Uh, for example, uh, the Nichikan capacitor that's on the assembly, there's uh, the data sheet here. Uh, more importantly, inside the app note is a, a classic graph which shows what happens to uh, this kind of component when it's exposed to uh, higher temperatures and how it affects the, the service life. Now, uh, Nichikon sells uh, these parts in two classes, 85 degrees and 105 degrees. Now, this one's clearly been marked as a 105, so it's going to be a curve number three, curve number four, or curve number five. Uh, now, I can't quite decode the part numbers to know the number of service hours, so uh, let's pick up curve number four at the moment just to sort of get a feel of how this graph works. Um, measure the bulb inside running about 95 degrees uh, centigrade so uh, you draw the graph across drop that uh, red line and then you can read off the number of hours that the vendor will guarantee that capacitor uh, to operate in uh, you can see it's just a, a wee bit over 5,000 hours now 5,000 hours uh, is much less than a year uh, you flip the bulb uh, packaging over you can see that's been guaranteed for 10 years and then if you look at the finer print uh, that's running six hours a day so even that actually isn't enough to to uh, demonstrate this capacitor would be uh, guaranteed by uh, Nichicon for the entire ten year service life. Um, now what's going on? I mean, have they have they made a design error here? Um, maybe it's curve number five. Even if you take curve number five, it's still going to be about ten thousand hours. It's still not enough for ten years life at six hours a day. Um, it's a game of statistics in uh, this kind of product, and basically uh, you want to put down components. Uh, so the customer sees a, a reasonable rate of failure, but not too much of a rate of failure. Uh, and this is the one, the big trade if you got to make, actually, build very cost-effective assemblies. If you put too much money in your assembly, you're probably not going to sell your bulb. If you put too little money in your assembly, uh, it's going to fail too soon for too many customers, and you're going to get a bad reputation. So a uh, real interesting branch of uh, engineering, um, doing uh, reliability calculations and trying to figure out uh, the actual serviceable life uh, and picking a reasonable value. Okay, so in this test, I'm just going to look at the uh, light dispersal patterns of this bulb. They claim it's omnidirectional on the uh, packaging, but uh, when you look at the bulb there, the LEDs are all pointing out uh, in very spe very specific directions, kind of suggesting to me that actually there won't be great amount of light coming out of the uh, top of the bulb. So what I've got here is I've just drawn a, a very simple pattern on a CAD system. Um, I'm going to put the bulb down right in the center here, and then what I'm going to do is on a constant line of distance from the center of the bulb. I'm going to measure the, the lux coming from the bulb and that'll allow me to draw a graph which indicates uh, how the bulb uh, dissipates its light. Okay, so now the graph has two sets of numbers, one in black which is the Cree light bulb and one in green which is a uh, Phillips bulb, uh, a standard incandescent bulb. Now, as we sort of go around the uh, axes, you can see that of course that we have a lobe here and then the Cree came in, but the incandescent bulb is relatively uh, constant, and we come up. So I'll just zoom out here, and uh, basically you can see that the, um, although not circular, the incandescent bulb is reasonably uniform around uh, the axes, but the, the Cree bulb uh, is indeed actually not, not omnidirectional. It doesn't produce the same amount of light. Uh, the front of the bulb uh, pointing uh, upwards or downwards, depending on how you install the bulb, will definitely produce less light. Now, uh, you can actually see this. There's another video on YouTube under this uh, same account name that basically shows how this bulb uh, works in good, the how the Cree bulb works in some situations and uh, definitely has a few challenges in others. All right, well, that was fun. Uh, just a heap of engineering going on in these little products.